If the Earth was viewed from space, you would see a ring of atmosphere around the Earth. This ring extends from the surface into space by 62 miles. The atmosphere is held into place by the Earth's gravity. At sea level, the 62 miles of air above us and around us bears down upon our bodies at 14.7 pounds per square inch. We don't feel the pressure around us because the pressure in and outside of our bodies is roughly the same and cancels out the forces. At 4,800 feet, where I live, there is less air above us, and so the pressure bearing down upon our bodies is only 12.31 psi. So, how does this affect vacuum? If freeze dryers were placed at sea level and at 4,800 feet, where I live, the pressure at 4,800 feet is much less than the pressure at sea level. The higher the altitude, the less and thin, thinner air than at sea level. The vacuum requirements for each freeze dryer would be different due to the amount of air pressure around each unit. It should be noted that we are assuming that the barometric pressure and temperatures would be the same and ideal for this example. At 4,800 feet, my freeze dryer would need to remove less air than a freeze dryer located at sea level in the Florida Keys. There are two scales to measure vacuum pressure. The English standard is as inches of mercury and the metric standard it is millimeters of mercury, also known as TOR. In a way, the scales are inverse. A perfect vacuum is recognized in the English scale as 20, 29.92 inches of mercury. In the metric system, a perfect vacuum is zero millimeters of mercury. The English scale goes from zero to 29.92, where the metric scale goes from 720 tor to zero. It should be noted that a perfect vacuum is impossible to obtain. Even in space, it's impossible to make a perfect vacuum. A perfect vacuum is defined as a region of space without any particles. A perfect vacuum is impossible because quantum theory dictates that energy fluctuations, known as virtual particles, are constantly popping in and out of existence, even in empty space. Here we have a standard harvest right freeze dryer at sea level. We're going to strip away everything except for the inner chamber. A glass tube is attached to the bottom of the chamber and extends down to a reservoir. The reservoir will be filled with mercury. The tube will be marked at the bottom with 720 millimeters and 720 millimeters up from that will be marked zero millimeters. This is the metric scale. Next, we'll attach a vacuum pump to the chamber. When the vacuum pump is turned on, a vacuum is created inside the chamber and sucks the mercury up the tube. At sea level, a perfect vacuum would be achieved when the column of mercury reaches 720 millimeters, or zero. But since a perfect vacuum is impossible to reach, the mercury falls short. At this point, we want to focus into the super small gap between the perfect vacuum line and the top of the mercury column. In our example, the gap between zero millimeters, a perfect vacuum, and the top of the mercury column is one half millimeter. One millimeter equals 1,000 microns, or one millimeter equals 1,000 millitors. The gap measures one half millimeter, or 500 millitors. This is a super high vacuum where freeze drying occurs and has to happen during the freeze drying process with the Harvest Right freeze dryer. At 4,800 feet, because the air is thinner, a column of mercury only has to travel 638 millimeters to achieve a vacuum. Just as a comparison, the human body, mouth and lungs, can only generate about 18 to 20 inches of mercury. Analog vacuum gauges can be a useful tool to measure rough vacuum. Analog gauges are relatively inexpensive. 
in order to use an analog gauge to troubleshoot vacuum problems, you'll need to know your altitude. For example, my analog gauge will only show 25 inches of mercury because I'm at 4,800 feet. At sea level, an analog gauge should show nearly 30 inches of vacuum. Compare that vacuum readings against the manufacturer's specifications. One of the drawbacks with analog vacuum gauges is the size of the vacuum inch increments. If we take one inch increment of the dial and magnify it to scale, we end up with this. 500 millitor width is a fine line against a one inch measurement of mercury on an analog gauge. An option to measure high vacuum would be using a digital micron vacuum gauge. These are more accurate. Many of them can be calibrated, but they're more expensive. This cost can be between $120 to $1,000.